Ken Mellor serving up breakfast. This is Sunrise on 7. Well, it always seems like a good idea to start with. You've seen <laughs> better homes and gardens, you've seen the outdoor room. But once the house is filled with dust, the bills start blowing out and the builder gets behind on the job, it feels nothing like those TV shows. Damn it. <laughs> so how do you get through a home renovation? Well, this morning on Sunrise in Focus, we have a survival guide. Joining us is Amanda Faulkner. Good morning to you, Amanda. Thanks for coming in. Now, you're an experienced home renovator. So you, why did you decide in the first place to take on the job? Well, I think uh, viewers have seen some of my before shots of my house, so truly it was a horror show. Uh, it was a house that was crying out for renovation and I, I bought it by accident. And, you know, really there was nothing great about that house, but I knew I could do things to it and I guess it had that location mantra, it was in a great location. All right. Now, had you renovated before? No, I hadn't. I was absolutely okay. a novice. So, Mel, when you say I'm experienced, I'm experienced now. But oh, back okay. then, Not then. All right. All right. I certainly wasn't. Did otherwise. it go according to plan? Well, it didn't. And probably if I had a little more experience, it might have gone according to plan. But, but the short story is that my three-month renovation was supposed to cost $180,000. And it ended up taking two years. And it cost over $250,000. And, you know, essentially what happened is that the there were some defective works that I discovered after the three-month mark had passed and my house was only half built and the re builder refused to fix them. I was forced to, you know, fire him. I finished the building with a variety of other trades and then I was able to sue the builder. Um, but in case people are thinking, gosh, you know, if only she found a good builder, all her problems would have been solved. Well, some of them would have been. But I think the key thing that I realised um, through that whole process was that problems happen to lots of people, not necessarily disasters, but there are lots of things you can put in place to avoid those, those problems occurring. Hence your book. Yes. Now you've got four most common problems and we might just run through those ones. So time, bud time blowouts, budget blowouts, bad building quality and stress. Um, with the time and the budget blowout, should we not just factor those in in the beginning anyway? Well, yes, but I think there are two key things to bear in mind with time and, and money blowouts. The first is, yes, there are some things that are that are unavoidable, like weather, so that extends time. Um, and, and of course, renovation by its nature means that you're pulling things apart and sometimes you can't see what you're going to discover. So, yes, you need to make an allowance for that. But aside from that, there are some common things that drive time and money blowouts, and, and those are things that you can manage. Two of those key things are people don't, often or don't always get detailed plans and lots of people find it really hard to visualise things and so they change their mind once building is, has begun and that is a recipe for a disaster. There's a, there's a couple in the book whose um, three month renovation took nine months and was supposed to cost $209,000 and cost $279,000 and they made 20 variations along the way, things that they went, oh gosh, this isn't how we were imagining, oh my god, the kitchen's got no pantry in it. So they made changes and that really blew out time and money. Okay, give us some other tips for anyone about to, to do a renovation. Um, this, the contract's got to be the really important thing to start with, doesn't it? Well, it's interesting you say that, Koshi, because when I interviewed lots of people for the book, and also uh, there are there is advice from top experts, industry experts in the book, and this comes through quite strongly, people really gloss over their contract. And I, in a sense, did that too. I took mine to a conveyancer to check. Well, you know, yes, I got a lawyer to check it, but it wasn't really the right kind of lawyer. So in your contract, there's lots of standard contracts in the industry, but there's also lots of clauses that you need to structure to suit you as much as possible, like start and finish times, penalties for delays, how payments are going to be made, all of those kind of things. So that's really important. But, you know, detailed plans are uh, very important as well. Obviously, doing your homework about the builder and not letting impatience drive your decision making and then f sorry this this quantity surveyor yes i had i'd never heard of one until my daughter married one um <laughs> oh at they, least if we need one yeah, we know where to get them now <laughs> Home is really good. but they're, they're they're like a building auditor aren't they they check the builder on your behalf but i always thought 
They were just for big fancy buildings, not a home renovation. Well, quantities, th there aren't enormous numbers of quantity surveyors for uh, residential construction, but really what they do is they work out what they call a bill of quantities. So, so they work out all the materials and the quantities of the materials. Yeah. And as I, I'd never heard of one either, but as I went through my renovation, I thought, oh gosh, next time, you know, not everybody, not every builder finds it really easy to do a quote, and it's also really time consuming for them. So getting a quantity surveyor to work out those quantities of the materials and then saying to the builder, there are my detailed plans, there's my complete specification, and there also, by the way, is the bill of quantities that you can quote on. Yep, and, and if they don't deliver, you don't pay. The quantity <laughs> surveyor says, well, your details were this, the builder didn't match them, so, you know, he's got to fix them up. So it's Brilliant. interesting. It is a minefield, though. Isn't it? Thank you, Amanda. How to keep your relationship intact through it all to be a completely different subject for discussion, isn't it? Mm. So, uh, yeah. Thank you for joining us. Thank and um, all of Amanda's uh, tips are in her book, The Renovator's Survival Guide. It's in stores this weekend.